break them off. All right, drag those off out of the way. Now, as you can see, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. This I should go ahead and merge with this. Seems now as I have these edges that I've broken off. I'm going to go ahead and select this and just take it over to the other side. This is probably, I think, the dead front of the mesh. Let's go ahead and right click, rotate this. All right, move it over. And go ahead and stitch it to target. And we got to relax this and I need to select all this. All right, I'm going to use tools, relax, and I'm going to relax this. There we go. Nice. Okay, so that is the dead front of it. Those are my edges. Go ahead and rotate this. Go ahead and move this over here like that. And this is the back. And I can easily see, you know, this is the whole back side of it, so it makes a lot of sense. It's really easy to work with here. Now you might have to scale it down to fit yours in here if it doesn't fit. Uh, but now we need to, actually I'm, I'm going to have to scale this a little, little bit because I need room for these things here. So I'll scale it down just a hair. I'll take the top here, scale it down just a hair as well. So maybe I'll just move this over here so I can try to fit all these other things along the sides here. These are kind of curvy and they'd be really hard to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to straighten these out. It's really simple way to do it is just come over here and under reshape elements select straighten selection see how that just flattened it out we're gonna do the same thing with this one just come over here straighten selection and probably do the same thing with each of these straighten it and uh, straighten it straighten it and straighten it now they're going to be really easy to re to shape, you know, basically fit in there. Let's go ahead and rotate this. And I'm just going to go ahead and fit it right here so I'll have to scale it. Because it doesn't fit. It's too big. Scale. There we go. And just go ahead and move it. And probably scale it up a little bit. I'm going to zoom in so I get a more accurate scale. When you're scaling, try to move at an exact diagonal angle. That way you don't warp your texture on it. Okay. I'm just fitting it in here. Oh, too big. Ah, let's go down his hair. And basically, you just want to fit everything inside that fits. And do the same thing with this one. Right click, rotate it. And I want to go ahead and fit it inside here with the other one. Click, scale it. All right, shrink it down, move it over. Oh, yeah, way too small. Right click, scale. I can probably scale it a little bit more. Yeah, move it. There you go, that fit. And these will be really easy to fit. I probably don't even gotta scale these. Just pop them in here. Now if you look at this, if you think of this as a plate, something that you would paint on, look how easy this is gonna be to paint. Everything's just fits in there. It's not like trying to paint on um something you pelt mapped. This is very organized, it's very neat, very uniform. Everything fits into shape. There we go, there is my UV map. Very nice. Now I'm gonna check, I'm just gonna select here, select checker pattern, shrink this. I'm going to disable my edged faces. I'm just gonna kind of scan over and make sure none of my squares are stretchy, which none of them will be. I mean, this is a perfect UV map. I mean, you just can't beat this UV mapping. Very nicely done. Everything looks very uniform. My squares are all very neat and nice. 
Once all that's done, you just come over here, click X. Oh my gosh, what did you do? You just lost it. Ah, oh, you gotta start over, dude. That's it. No, I was just playing. Just right click and convert it to an editable uh, poly. <laughs> and that'll preserve your UV map. At this point, it's probably a really good idea to save your work. All right, so we're gonna go to File, Save It. And I'm just gonna call this uh, AAA, and I'm gonna call this Tutorial. Just go ahead and save that. All right, now our mesh is ready to be put into ZBrush so we can actually start doing something with this detail that we've done. We've created some edges uh, around it so we can add some really cool detail into this. So in order to get that done, first thing we gotta do is we gotta come over here, select my vertices of this, go ahead and select all the vertices, and you wanna make sure you weld these. Now you can weld them to a zero point. Where is my weld? There it is. Just select settings and you just go to 0 0.001. I'm just gonna hit checkbox and I'm gonna spam that a little bit with that at 0 0.01. Very good. Now this is ready to be exported for ZBrush. We don't want the body, we just want this piece. So we're gonna go to file, we're gonna say export, export selected. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm gonna to go to this folder I created called exported OBJ. I'm going to call this the low poly uh, upper chest. And I'm going to export it as an OBJ file. Let's go find your OBJ and select save. Now ZBrush already has a setting in the object export options. There's a preset called ZBrush and that's exactly what we want to use. It's just we're going to use our ZBrush. So you just go down here, select ZBrush, which will be at the bottom, and you select export. And go ahead and click done. Now I just want to double check something here. When you export and select export selected, I might have missed this. Save, yes. Quads. This is a big important thing. ZBrush has to take quads. If you're, what is a quad versus what is a triangle? Let me show you that real quick. I did export this in quads, which is something you definitely have to do to put it into ZBrush and work with it. Let me show you what I mean by quads versus tries. If I select edge faces, look at the body. You see how these are little triangles? It's all little triangles. If you kind of gaze at it for a moment, you can tell that at one point this body mesh was all in quads. When it was exported using probably NIF tools, NIF tools has a checkbox called triangulate and it triangulated these quads so they'd be little triangles. Basically all it did was stick a little line in between them. Uh, based off of the X, uh, which would be the Y axis, left of Y or right of Y, and then the angle. That's kind of how it works. Uh, you see, it's in quads, export in quads. Now we're ready to pull it up and put it in a ZBrush.